Hey, welcome back to uh, Mastering uh, AXI Protocol series. So in this video, we will look at uh, AXI read of two bytes and uh, we are going to be using 32-bit 32 uh, 32 data bus width, which is four bytes. And the scenario that we are going to analyze is uh, that we will issue four reads of length two bytes to first two locations of uh, this address range. And in this particular scenario, what we are going to see is that uh, the last read uh, is going to cross the data bus uh, with the boundary and how that affects the reads issued on the AXI channels, we will look at it. And uh, when we, and the second group is that we will issue four reads of length two bytes to the last uh, four locations of this address range. And in this case, what's going to happen is when we issue the last uh, read to the last location, it's going to have two things. As one is the data bus with the boundary is going to cross and as well as the 4KB uh, boundary will cross. So we will look at how uh, that affects the uh, transactions happening on the AXI channel. Um, so let's uh, jump into the uh, uh, jump into the transaction uh, visualization. So I have already uh, loaded the test in the Curiosity transaction uh, visualization and analysis dashboard. Uh, so I have filtered for transaction length of two bytes. And uh, the uh, so if you look at it, uh, key thing to notice is the addresses that we are uh, issuing. The first one is uh, completely D word aligned, then D word aligned plus one, D word aligned plus two, and D word aligned plus three. And when we do it on the plus three, uh, and with the length of uh, two bytes, uh, this is the case where it's going to lead to uh, a data bus width boundary crossing. So that's transaction ID count 12. And uh, subsequently, we are going to issue to the last four locations, which is FFC, one FFC, one FFC, and one FFC, and one FFF. And when we do this, so one FFC is again a D word uh, boundary aligned address. But when we do it to the one FF with the transaction length of two bytes, it's going to again cross both the data bus width boundary as well as the 4KB because of the uh, one FF. Uh, so this is the transaction ID 16. So we will look a little closely into these two transactions. So first we will analyze the uh, group of 9 to 12 and then we'll analyze 13 to 16 and then we'll quickly uh, sort of look at 12 and 16 in isolation to understand uh, what's the difference. So uh, now let's look at uh, how uh, these high level transactions that have been issued either by a UVM sequence or a software uh, have played out on the actual AXI channels. Uh, so here what I've done is I've already filtered the transaction counts 9 to 12 uh, and um, let's look at how uh, it has uh, executed on the AXI channels. So um, on the AR channel, uh, it has issued the uh, AR address of uh, 1000 that uh, the high level transaction that we had given. It has used a AR ID of eight and uh, AR size uh, of two encoding four bytes, AR length of zero, uh, telling that we want to do one burst. And uh, for that, the read, um, uh, read data channel, we see that we have received the response, uh, the RID of eight, matching the uh, ARID of eight, indicating that this is the data corresponding to this particular burst that we had started. And uh, it has given the two bytes of data. The two bytes of data are zero, zero and uh, zero, one. Uh, so the two bytes of data have come on the lower word. Um, so now if we go to the next transaction, which is D word plus one, uh, you can notice the ARID is 9 and here we are seeing ARID of 9 over here. You can see that it has already shifted by one byte and we are seeing the data on the byte channel uh, 1 and 2, uh, right? So if we quickly go back to our presentation and if I go over here, uh, we see that for the D word aligned, it was on the lower two, then it shifts to the first and second and then it will shift to the second and third. Um, so let me quickly come over here. And if we go to the 11th transaction, uh, right, which is of ARID A, and if I scroll over here, you can see that it has already shifted uh, by another byte, uh, right? So it has come to already the, the so the data byte uh, 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 zero uh, and one we are leaving 
and then uh, between two and we are able to see it on two and three so a byte lane two and three we are able to see that now the this is the most interesting part so now when we come to the 12th what has happened is we are on a d world uh, plus three and we are issuing two bytes and here what it has done is instead of doing it in one beat uh, as we had seen it in the previous transactions uh, you can see the r last being true over here it has now created two beats right so it has created two beats and in each beat uh, the aw id uh, will be of course it will be uh, the ar id will be matching so the ar id uh, the ar id of b that we have used is matching with the r id that uh, has been issued and if you see the r data that uh, has uh, been sent out the first time it is zero and the second time it is one and the first uh, time it is uh, it is not still the end of burst and here it is end of burst right so this way we can see that uh, the uh, the transaction where we have crossed the data bus uh, width boundary but we have not crossed the 4kb boundary it has been split into two bits right now if i go to so now next set is we will analyze the uh, uh, how the access gets executed for the last uh, four uh, uh read accesses right so let me quickly uh filter the last four that is 13 to uh i will just filter from 13 to 16 uh right so let me filter from 13 to 16 uh i think for i'm i'm not going to go into the details of one ffc one ffd and one ffe if you see it it follows a very similar pattern as what we had seen at the uh initial stages uh it is just going to use the appropriate uh, byte lanes and they will keep shifting so what we will do is we will look more closely at the 16 wherein we are crossing the 4kb boundary uh, right so once we have crossed the 4kb boundary now here we have to look at two things one is that uh, when it had only crossed the data bus with the boundary it had resulted in two beats whereas when it has crossed the 4kb boundary we are seeing two bursts so the first burst goes out for the 1FF and uh, uh, it is of the length 1 and uh, so we, it will it will it will uh, it will complete over here and we can see the data byte uh, being read as uh, 0 and this is the R last being true and uh, that that's the one that completes then we issue a second burst uh, for this plus 1 at uh, hex 2000 address and point to note over here is the AR ID is still maintained same because now what we have to ensure is the ordering uh, between these two transactions uh, remains same that's why you will see that the AR ID used uh, is same and then uh, this particular uh, burst also will contain only one bit and it completes over here and we see the data uh, being returned as one uh, so this is the way it completes uh, for the case where it's crossing the 4kb boundary along with the data bus width boundary so what i will try to do is let me just select this 16 one last time and our another guy who was uh, 12 uh, which was the data bus width boundary now uh, here it gives you a very clear picture that this is a case where uh, we are d world plus three and we we wanted a, a length of two bytes so it had resulted in two beats so it managed in the form of two beats and uh, it was able to transfer the uh, transfer the entire data content but whereas when it crossed the 4kb boundary it resulted in uh, two bursts and uh, then in each burst it you ended up using one bit because it's just two bytes but this same concept will extend for any uh, number of bytes being transferred i hope this gives uh, insight into this uh, key concept of how uh, it splits in terms of uh, number of beats versus the number of bursts depending on the uh, depending on the address uh, that we are using whether it's crossing just the data bus width boundary or data bus width boundary plus the uh, 4kb crossing uh, if you have any questions uh, please leave it in the comments thank you